Good day everyone and welcome back to SCP Illustrated, entry log 115. It's been a while, hasn't it, since a proper vid, something like three weeks now, damn. Well, I hope these sketches reflect the time that went into them. Today we're taking a look at the infamous SCP-076, also known as Abel. This is a Keta-class SCP and this video does contain strong language, dismemberment, lots of blood and lots of violence. Without further ado, let's begin. The following data release has been authorised by the following council members and administration staff. I have to go on record as saying that I seriously object to the proposed revisions of the SCP-076 Special Containment Procedures file. I know that Redact All Important Stuff already claims it's a security risk, but you and I both know it's just top brass trying to sweep their biggest and most embarrassing mistake ever under the damn rug. Omega-7 happened. It existed. Those people died because you screwed up. And you can't change that, no matter how hard you try to hide it. For God's sake, man. Those people guarding him deserve to know exactly what he is and what he did. What we did. How we messed up. So they'll know better. Description. SCP-076 consists of two components, a stone cube and a humanoid entity contained within. SCP-076-1 is a 3 meter cube made of black speckled metamorphic stone. All surfaces outside and within SCP-076-1 are covered in deeply engraved patterns corresponding to no known civilizations. Radioisotope analysis indicates that the object is approximately 10,000 years old. A door is located on one side, sealed with a lock 0.5 meters in width, surrounded by 20 smaller locks in a circular pattern. As of yet, none of the keys have been found, making the door impossible to lock once closed. Interior temperature is approximately 93 Kelvin and cannot be altered by any means internal or external. Directly in the centre of the room is a 2.13 metre tall stone coffin held in place and sealed shut by several chains of unknown make and substance which are attached to the inner corners of SCP-076-1. SCP-076-2 resembles a lean Semitic human male in his late 20s. Hair is black and eyes are grey, skin tone olive. Subject is 1.96 metres in height and 81.65 kilograms in weight. Numerous tattoos depicting arcane and occult iconography are present all over the body and range from subtle to openly ostentatious. Subject when encased inside SCP-076-1 is technically dead. However, occasionally SCP-076-2 will awaken, effectively reanimating, complete with all vital processes needed to sustain a living human being. Subject will then attempt to leave SCP-076-1. If successful, subject will enter a trance state and seek out the nearest human being, ignoring all other living things in the process. Upon coming into contact with living humans, SCP-076-2 will enter a rage state, in which it attempts to engage and kill all human beings encountered. To date, only the subject's death has been shown to be effective in ending these rampages. Terminating SCP-076-2 is often problematic Due to its significant physical abilities, subject has superhuman strength and speed and, although not invulnerable, has shown a remarkable ability to ignore pain and shock, pressing on despite what would be debilitating wounds in normal humans. Prior encounters have shown that SCP-076-2 has the ability to, among other things, rip through a reinforced steel security door over the course of four minutes of sustained assault clear over 64 metres of distance in under 3 seconds, take multiple 50 calibre BMG rounds to the head and survive for several minutes to continue killing despite severe damage to the cerebellum, swapped handgun and assault rifle calibre bullets out of the air with a length of steel rebar, survive for over 1 hour deprived of oxygen before asphyxiating. SCP-076-2's most unusual ability however is its ability to apparently materialise bladed weapons out of nowhere. 
Slow motion video footage reveals that the blades in question are actually pulled from a miniature dimensional rift described as a small hole in space. Where this portal leads is unknown, as is how SCP-076-2 is capable of generating said rifts. Footage of the blades in question shows them to be made out of a completely non-reflective black material appearing as a black void in space. As the blades rapidly vanish after leaving the subject's possession, no structural analysis is possible at this time. SCP-076-2 has effectively been killed several times in various manners. Sustained fire from multiple heavy caliber machine guns, asphyxiation, crushed beneath a 13.6 metric ton piece of elevator equipment for use on SCP-076-1, cremation through the use of a Thermate 2H3 grenade placed directly inside SCP-076-2's open chest cavity. During the worst breach to date, Containment Area 25 was forced to detonate its on-site warhead as a last attempt to contain SCP-076-2 while it was attempting escape, resulting in total destruction of the site and all on-site personnel. SCP-076-1 survived. Upon death, SCP-076-2's remain will putrefy rapidly until reduced to dust. SCP-076-1 and the coffin will then slam shut with great force and the lock will rotate sealing it shut. SCP-076-2 will then reform within the coffin, a process taking anywhere from 6 hours to 25 years. What posthumous analysis of SCP-076-2 exists shows that it has an internal system highly different from our own, documented Additional SCP-076 was found in Mongolia in 18... by archaeologists from England. All members of the expedition were subsequently killed on the return voyage home. SCP-076 was recovered from the ship by the Society, one of the organizations that later merged into the modern Global Occult Coalition, and placed on display in their inner sanctum. SCP-076 remained in storage for years until SCP-076-2 became active and escaped on The reason for SCP-076's activation is currently unknown, but it was at this point that the keys to the outer shell were lost. A massive manhunt lasting over three years and took place until SCP-076-2 was incapacitated, killing it and causing it to reform inside SCP-076-1, by then retrieved and secured by agents of the SCP Foundation. Subject was in custody for three more years under constant supervision and was terminated whenever it became active. Although it occasionally was able to escape for short periods of time, often due to security breaches caused by attacks from other organizations. The Foundation's death toll due to this was... After the last incident, the current procedures regarding SCP-076 were implemented although they are upgraded regularly with the increase in technological standards. Special Containment Procedures Containment Area 25 Bravo is to be located 200 meters below sea level, tunneled out of solid bedrock, in a seismologically stable area. Sole access to the containment facility is to be through a vertical elevator shaft, separated every 50 meters with a reinforced blast door, constructed of 20 centimeter thick material shielding. Elevator shaft shall be flooded with seawater when not in use. Containment Area 25 Bravo is to be constructed with the following components. An outer security perimeter against outside threats, staffed by security personnel trained in close quarters battle and counter intrusion tactics. An administrative and support area consisting of support facilities and living quarters for on-site personnel. A primary containment zone consisting of a 7 meter cube encased in 1.5 meters of reinforced material. The primary containment zone is to be designed to be flooded and drained as needed and should remain filled with seawater unless access to the contents is required. A 150 meter killing corridor which is to be the sole access to the primary containment zone from the administrative and support area including water, power, drainage and ventilation lines. 
The walls and floor of the corridor are to be reinforced in a similar manner to the primary containment zone with the addition of an electrical deterrent system capable of delivering a 20,000 volt shock. A security station located at the entrance to the killing corridor is to be staffed with no fewer than three armed security personnel on watch at any one point in time. Armament is to include but not be limited to at least one CIW system on a pinnacle mount with a clear line of sight down the corridor with a plexiglass screen to protect the operator from thrown weapons. In the event of a full breach, all on-site staff are to proceed immediately to the closest security station for weapons and armour distribution. Staff will remain at alert condition 1 until SCP-076-2 is confirmed neutralised. Should 90 minutes pass after declaration of a full breach without a stand-down order being given by a level 4 or higher personnel, final contingency measures will be activated, flooding the entire facility in seawater and sealing off the access shaft for a minimum of 24 hours before retrieval is attempted. This will, by necessity, result in the deaths of all on-site staff. Addendum 076-2 Project ABLE and Mobile Task Force Omega-7 Psychological Profile of Subject SCP-076-2 SCP-0762 either possesses a mind constructed much differently than our own, or is completely insane, with little empathy or ideas in a way we would understand it. Concepts such as sex, love, and equality are completely foreign ideas to SCP-0762, or at least in comparison to its way of viewing them. Subject has shown that it is completely disinterested in sex, barely differentiating between genders except as a form of visual identification. Also, while subject has admitted greatly enjoying the act of killing, causing pain, either emotionally or physically, holds no attraction to it. In short, a perfect sociopath. Intelligence tests have been wildly inconclusive when applied to SCP-0762, and no accurate result has yet been obtained. This may be due to the alien thought processes of the subject. SCP-0762 has however shown that it has great knowledge of human anatomy, although in highly violent context. Military tactics of open warfare, metallurgy, and strangely enough, the care of livestock. Subject has knowledge of several languages, including English, but most notable is its knowledge of several dialects of ancient Sumerian which seems to be its preferred language. SCP-076 has nothing but contempt for human beings, with one exception. It seems to hold a very respect for those it acknowledges as its superior. This was discovered when agent an agent who had previously had a large amount of experience with SCP-0762 did not appear once it escaped. Subject seemed distressed asking several personnel where Agent hiding. When it finally did learn of the fate of Agent killed as collateral damage in an airstrike intended to halt the advance of SCP, SCP-0762 stopped its rampage and allowed itself to be escorted and restrained. Subject was then interviewed on the sudden drastic changes in its behavior. Why are you so interested in the death of Agent Why does his death bother you? You've killed many humans before. Why is he so different? Because unlike you, Kusamalk, he was a challenge, a real enemy. Why would that be good for you? Every time you have awoken, you've tried to escape. He was responsible for apprehending you several times. Surely, you must be glad he's dead. I would hardly expect you to understand. Do you know he managed to shoot me in the head over times? A man like that deserves to die in combat. So close to his opponent he can feel his breath. Not in some bully facade destruction ordered by cowardly kings and princes safe in their palaces. The rest of you. You disgust me. I don't even have the urge to strike you down.
This indicates a possible psychological inlet into SCP-0762's mind and a possible control mechanism. Given the massive drain on resources SCP-0762 causes due to its escape attempts, and considering Bo Commission's stated desire to weaponize SCP objects for tactical purposes, I recommend that we pursue this course of action as soon as possible. From Doc to Doctor Project Omega Seven, subject. He said yes. Project proposal: Mobile Task Force Omega Seven Pandora's Box. Mission statement: Support of SCP-076-2 in the field in high-risk tactical situations. Task Force organization: Task Force Special Asset Able Task Force Leader. 10 to 20 field agents divided into five teams of three to five each. Members of the team are to be personally selected from elite field agents by Subject Abel himself in order to maintain a smooth relationship between the artifact and the mundane elements of the task force. Security Protocol SCP-076-2 is to wear a device attached to the neck that if triggered or tampered with will immediately detonate, terminating SCP-076-2 by way of complete destruction of the spinal cord, trachea, and all major blood vessels in the neck. A tracking device has also been attached to SCP-076-2's person. It is to refrain from killing unless ordered to do so, and is to avoid causing damage to the organization's facilities. Armament and Equipment Team members are to be armed and equipped in accordance with MTF doctrine. As Subject Abel has shown no inclination to use firearms, or in fact no understanding of their use or tactical implications, he is instead to be armed with one or more edged melee weapons of his choice. Addendum For God's sake. Find these guys something to do. Abel's getting bored, and he started putting his team through live fire exercises. They get bullets. He gets training weapons. Have you ever seen someone break a man's jaw using a nerf sword? He's not going to stop until someone gets killed. Report by Dr. P Project Omega-7 In light of SCP-0762's proficient use of Sumerian language, researchers have asked it to translate several documents. While it originally replied with disinterest, it has translated some of the documents it found worthy of its attention. Most of the documents chosen by SCP-0762 were regarding battles or great heroes, one of his favorites in particular being the Epic of Gilgamesh. However, one researcher presented it with the symbol from SCP-073. Upon the sight of this, SCP-0762 became highly enraged, killing several of the researchers before its kill switch could be activated. When revived and questioned about this, SCP-0762 responded aggressively and that line of questioning was immediately dropped. It is recommended anything pertaining SCP-073 never be brought to the attention of SCP-0762, and that the two are never to be in the same facility. Addendum 07607 Recently, SCP-105 has been accepted into Mobile Task Force Omega-7, having beaten SCP-076-2 in a contest to see which of the two could activate several devices, each spaced over a mile away from each other and the starting point. SCP-105 managed to score significantly higher than SCP-076-2 by using her inherent abilities to her advantage. SCP-076-2 seeded defeat and allowed her entry into the group. Addendum 07609 Proposed introduction of SCP-076-2 to SCP-682 put on indefinite hold. Those with security clearance level 4 or higher may request access to contingency 076-23. Addendum 076-23 Per the request of the Bow Commission, Mobile Task Force Omega-7 is to be fielded in the region of against to Doc Project Omega-7. Subject, don't do it. For God's sake, don't do it. 
It's bad enough they're trying to weaponize Iris, too. Don't let the military bully us into doing their dirty work against some sand farmers. And From General Bow to Doctor in Project Omega-7, subject, a job well done. Excellent work, Doctor. The mission went exactly as expected. We'll be calling you again if we need your help. From Doctor to Doctor in Project Omega-7, subject, I hope you're proud of yourself, motherfucker. Because you're a bigger asshole than this guy. From Doctor Project Omega-7 to Omega-7 team, subject reassignment. As of this moment, Dr. has been assigned to SCP-682 as level 1 personnel. From Dr. Project Omega-7 to General Bow, subject problems. Despite our best efforts, subject Abel is proving difficult to control. All our attempts to keep him engaged have been more or less unsuccessful. The problem is, he is a perfect killing machine, and that's all he wants to do. Which seems like exactly what we wanted. But the problem is, we can't seem to turn him off. I'm running out of missions to give him, and the ones I've got left aren't engaging him mentally. He's starting to lash out at the other team members. It's only a matter of time before something goes wrong. Requesting permission to discontinue the project and neutralize Abel temporarily. Until we can find something more for him to do. From General Bow to Dr. Project Omega-7, subject regarding problems. Unacceptable. Neutralizing subject Abel at this point is going to cause us an unacceptable delay. We'll have another mission for you within a couple of weeks. All you have to do is keep him busy until then. Send him on a vacation or something. From Dr. Project Omega-7 to all staff, subject alert. SCP-0762 has disabled the explosive color failsafe and gone out of control. All staff to high alert. Further requests as events warrant. From Automated Defense System, Containment Area 25 to all sites, subject, final option engaged. From O5 Command to all sites, subject, Containment Area 25, final option response. As of... Containment Area 25 has been destroyed by detonation of its on-site nuclear warhead. Sites 67 and 68 are to activate the FEMA protocol and secure the location as soon as possible. Official cover story will be released by RAISA to all personnel once drafted. Revised Psychological Profile of SCP-076-2 SCP-076-2 either possesses a mind constructed much differently than our own, or is completely insane, with little empathy or ideas in a way we could understand it. Concepts such as sex, love and equality are completely foreign ideas to SCP-076-2, or at least in comparison to its way of viewing them. Subject has shown that it is completely disinterested in sex, barely differentiating between genders, except as a form of visual identification. Also, while Subject seems to greatly enjoy the act of killing, causing pain holds no attraction to it. Intelligence tests have been wildly inconclusive when applied to SCP-076-2, and no accurate result has yet been obtained. This is due to the fact that no communication is possible with the Subject when it is in a rage state. Subject displays knowledge of several languages, including English, but most notable is its knowledge of several dialects of ancient Sumerian, which seems to be its preferred language. SCP-076 has nothing but contempt for human beings and will kill them on sight. No communication is to be attempted with the subject. And that concludes this video on SCP-076. Please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it, it will help me out a lot, so I thank you in advance. I would like to take a moment to thank Lumi for playing one of the main researchers and thank you as well to Nature's Temper for voicing SCP-076. Both did a wonderful job, please go and check out their channels. And of course, thank you to my patrons who also voiced in this video, namely Viger, 
Cruel World, Jack Shiryuki, and Desi Fox. 076 and 073 will be returning very soon, but in the meantime, there are a couple more videos to go up this month. Uh, kicking off firstly with an old unlisted video, namely SCP-409. That one will be out next week. Be sure to follow all the social media outlets for video updates. Check out the SCP Illustrated shop for posters and prints. All the links can be found below. And if you can't wait days and weeks for new material, then consider joining the Patreon for early video access, seal the sketches early, get Discord access, recommend SCPs, take part in a video, and so much more. And thank you to Journals Alert, JT Walker, SCP-106A, Rick Traxon, Sam B, Andy98, Exalted Galaxy, Damodafucker, Horizons, Andre, Jax Merrick, and Chris Ford. Big thanks to the council members, Kibara, Desi Fox, Why Cruel World, The Commissar, Hunter Killer, Len Hox, and Captain Core. And huge thanks to the administrators, Zenan, Jack Howell, Mr. Elsewhere, Viger, Kumana, Jack Shirayuki, and Dan Merrill. Thank you all so much for watching. I will see you all soon. And take care.